In this analysis video, we're going to take a look at the swing of a Jordan Spieth. Specifically, we're going to take a look at Jordan Spieth's release and what he does that makes him such a consistent ball striker and what you can learn that you can apply to your own swing. So for those who've been kind of following my swing analysis videos, uh, the first one I did was Jordan Spieth um, and I actually did it right before he kind of went on a little bit of his tear and, and gained a little bit more popularity. and. Uh, it's a little, it was the first video I did, it was a little bit more um, negative in terms of just, hey, here are a bunch of things Jordan's doing wrong. So what I wanted to do was refilm it and help you understand what Jordan does so well in his release that you can learn from and apply to your own swing. So if we, if we kind of breeze through his backswing, we can see very good kind of one piece takeaway, not a ton of linear movement in the backswing, uh, good Good pivot, you know, all the all the planes and angles look pretty solid. Um, he does have a little bit of a unconventional grip um, with a weaker left hand that results in the big bowing movement that we see on the downswing. Uh, but for all intent and purposes, his backswing looks fairly normal, um, other than he's got a little bit of that bent lead arm. Now, I'm not a huge uh, critic of the bent lead arm. I think it can be... Uh, very helpful in terms of uh, what you want to do in the release um, as long as it's not kind of forced one way or the other. So let's get into the downswing which is where uh, I think Jordan really excels in what he does with his golf swing. So in transition he does a lot of really good things. He, he sequences with his lower body so one of the checkpoints we use is when did the thighs get parallel to the target line and you can see that he does that right about when his left arm is parallel, which is a clear indication that he's using his lower body. Even though from the face on view, you can see that there's a little bit of upper body kind of lunge or drift where the upper body is getting well on top of the lower body. Um, not dramatically so, but uh, uh, more so than we would see with kind of the average tour pro. Um, but at the same time, we can see that he has a really good arm shallowing move. And so the club is is uh, flattening nicely and setting him up for a really uh, good release position. We'll also see that at the end of his transition, you can see that his left shoulder is still higher than his right. Um, so he hasn't gone into this right side bend too early in the golf swing, which can mess up low point and angle of the attack. He's gonna do that more during the release. So one of the things that is frequently highlighted in his release is how from the face on camera angle you will tend to see a little unorthodox um, lead arm bend. Now it's not a true chicken wing because you'll see that his hands stay out in front of his chest so the arm isn't really working around him. He's not pulling and bending the arms in order to help square the club face. Um, it just seems to be the way that he stabilizes with his shoulder. But from a good perspective what we see is some tremendous right arm extension uh, without uh, collapsing or flipping his lead or his uh, trail wrist. So that right arm really extends through the release, which helps keep the wide point or keeps the arc width increasing through the ball, which tends to help build the flat spot for consistency. So his release pattern really begins right about here, and we'll see a couple key characteristics. One, we can see that He's able to create a fair amount of shaft lean, but he does so without taking a deep divot. So you'll see that he's able to create this shaft lean and not take a deep divot based on the combination of what he's doing with his arms and what he's doing with his body. Um, I've frequently heard that, you know, if you do everything right in transition, that uh, the release will happen almost automatically. But there's a lot of guys who have a similar uh, transition look to what we're seeing over here on the right who have very different release patterns so it can't quite be as automatic as some other instructors tend to lead you to believe so let's talk about what he does actively during the release that works so well so one he shallows out with his body um, by having his upper body his thorax move away from the golf ball as he's pushing through the ground um, causing that side tilt to initiate so what you'll see is during the release, his body is doing what I call bracing, 
where his body is starting to go into right side bend and it's going to max out the right side bend right around there. So from this down the line, you'll see from impact, as he continues through the follow through, you can see that the tilt of his shoulders continues to slightly increase between impact and follow through. So that's a trademark that I see with a lot of really good uh, solid ball strikers. Um, it helps set up for the shallow angle of attack if you also include really good arm movements, um, one in particular that I refer to as the wipe. So when he's doing this upper body or he's doing this body bracing, what we'll then see is we'll tend to see the arms work more across his body like so. If I put a horizontal line roughly when the shaft's vertical, you'll see that the hands work very much across his body. That's how he's able to have shaft lean but not take a very deep divot. A lot of amateurs at this point here, when the shaft is roughly parallel with the ground, would have their hands higher up closer to the belt height. And so what will happen is the hands will be moving down and so if they had that shaft lean, they would tend to take very deep divots. And that can be a big problem either with contact or creating hooks and snap hooks. Now one of the other pieces that I really like with Jordan's release is as that right arm extends, you'll see that he does a great job of keeping the elbow pointed down. So um, even though that arm is extending, it's not going into what we call internal rotation. Even though it's not going into internal rotation, from this down the line view, you can see that the club continues to rotate uh, compared to the plane. So the club is rotating even though his elbow is not or his shoulder is not internally rotating. Basically what we're seeing is that his trail forearm and lead forearm are rotating from the start of the release through to the end of the release in order to allow him to have shaft lean but still have the club face not point open. So he's squaring the club face with more of this shaft rotation and less with a flip or what I call in plane shaft movement. So that shaft rotating is getting the club face to point at the target, but the body position is allowing him to do so without taking a really deep divot, even though he has this shaft lean. I'm gonna keep saying those, stressing those three points. Um, how can you create shaft lean so that you get a heavy hit and hit kind of higher up on the face with the irons, but not take a super deep divot? Um, you have to do that with bracing with the body and wiping with the arms uh, during this release pattern. So again, as it applies to your release, don't be afraid to let your upper body back up through the shot, um, especially if it's coming from pushing that lead leg into the ground. That's actually a trademark of great ball strikers, a movement that we teach at, that we call bracing. And if you do so and you hit a lot of fat shots, then it typically means that you have a problem in your release pattern, specifically not enough of the white movement. So here's a great camera angle showing a combination of those. Um, you can see that Jordan is extending that right arm without really extending that right wrist. Um, the right wrist is going to rather flex or straighten that right wrist. That right wrist is going to straighten and flex um, more from the speed than an active movement um, in the wrist. So because his body is going this way as his arms are going with the club this way, that'll tend to cause the trail wrist to come out of extension. Uh, Jordan does a great job of sequencing the arm movements before the shoulder movements, and that's part of, of why he's been such a consistent ball striker the last few years. Um, he's the defending champ this week at the Masters. Uh, hopefully he can find his putting on the greens and return to form that he uh, demonstrated last year. So if you have any questions about your release, uh, feel free to sign up for a free membership over at golfsmartacademy.com. Um, there, if you want to work on the release and understand how Jordan is releasing the club the way that he does, check out the movements of the bracing in the release section, as well as the movements of the wipe in the release section, and hopefully that will help you with your game.